Yesterday, I was actually next door and uh, <clears throat> at the Digital Health Summit, I was moderating a panel there. And a big topic, of course, was interoperability, MRIs that to get them to talk to the electronic health record, um, <clears throat> remote patient monitoring hubs into the EHR, wearables into the EHR. And uh, it occurred to me that, um, you know, as the wearable ecology is developing that we're starting to come into our, our own data silo issue. Uh, I've been writing about uh, a concept I call parables, which um, basically takes the value of different wearables on your, <clears throat> on your person and uh, to combine them into something better. And, and that's, just, that's just one aspect. I, I really think that's going to start taking shape in, in 2020. And so as, as that happens, the ecology, <clears throat> all of us, will have to, have to respond. And so that's what we're here to, to talk about today. And with me, uh, I've got uh, Elizabeth Bowman. She is Vice President of Marketing and Growth, both those things, at, uh, at December Labs. And of course, uh, Catherine uh, Fantazzi. How did I do? Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> and uh, she's uh, CEO and co-founder of Apollo Neurosystems. So welcome to be both. Thank you, Thank you yeah. for having us. So I wanted to start um, with you, Liz. I can call you Liz here, right? Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, you know, as I see wearable startups, I, I see them sort of falling into two camps. One is that those that recognize that the wearable and the app are part and parcel of, of the platform or product, and those who are focused on their hardware innovation and realize sometimes a little late in the process that, hey, we need an app. And so maybe for the benefit of that latter group, um, give us a, a little idea of what, what's involved in, in developing an app and, and coordinating with your product. Sure. Um, so, uh, if you look at um, app development for wearables, there is a few things um, that are very particular and that um, are different from just regular app development um, uh, in general. So, um, one of the things is that, um, from a user perspective, really, the app and the wearable are one. Uh, they see it as one product. They don't differentiate and say, hey, you know, here's a company that actually um, you know, created the hardware that you know I'm going to use, that I'm going to wear, and here is an app development company. You know, they they really perceive it um, just as one. And if you think about it, for example, if you would work, research a product uh, on Google, and you you know you type it in, one of the results, if that wearable has an app, that would come up would probably be you know the app store ratings. So again, if those uh, app store ratings, for example, would be negative, um, that would directly influence the, perce uh, the, per um, the perception that you know, a user would have um, of that specific product. So I don't think there are too many data yet on actually you know, um, at the uh, where, uh, apps for wearables you know, affecting um, user satisfaction, but there are um, you know, uh, statistics that say, for example, that um, users that have a bad experience with mobile apps um, think uh, in 60% you know, bad about the company that um, that you know, build that up. So if you take that to the where to the level of wearables, where really a lot of times the wearable without the app will not function or you know will not even start, you know you can just imagine how much higher um, that is. And then on the other hand, um, Christian uh, was uh, you know um, mentioning um, the importance of, of data and you know and uh, for, for wearables in general, you know um, for uh, wearables sending over data and receiving data. And that also happens all, you know, through the app. For example, if you want to get meaningful analytics, um, you know, you won't really be able to receive them. You know, the, where, the, the product might be, you know, very good, but if you don't have, you know, a usable interface that will display that, then it won't be really worth it. Yeah. And I think we're, you know, at the start, four or five years ago, maybe, you know, everything was really kind of siloed. Fitbit is Fitbit, period. And, Things like you know Google Fit are starting to incorporate other other folks. How, how you know what 
does that mean for somebody going into doing that now that maybe they didn't have to worry about a few years back? Um, I think on the one hand, um, again, today a wearable without an app um, really uh, is like most of the time doesn't have any meaning. So um, in the example of Apollo, for example, yeah. you know, there, there's, there's a couple of things um, that I think um, uh, happen for, or that, that, that are true for many different products um, that we could highlight there. Um, on the one hand, it's, um, you know, how, how do you connect with the wearable? So most of the times you do that via Bluetooth, but there's also you know a few other um, uh, options uh, from you know reading data through computer vision, from for example a medical wearable device um, or um, or new field communication and I've seen. But in this case, you know we did we are Bluetooth, um, which is really good on um, battery power. So uh, it's you know user friendly in that sense. Um, then uh, really, if you look at you know the actual user interface, uh, most wearables don't really you know have a screen or a display. So the app really is the only user interface you know uh, that that user sees um, uh, firsthand. So again, you know that's a big responsibility on the app. Um, then Apollo has not gone yet to uh, towards FDA approval, but it's something you know that we uh, that they've been looking at from the very start. So that also um, is something totally different when it comes to app development, as you have to have different kind of development processes, um, different kind of unit testing. You have to have everything uh, FDA compliant. Um, then another thing um, that happens a lot is uh, you know the item uh, the the issue of scalability. Um, when you have a, you know, a product that involves hardware, you can't really update it all the time as you can an app. So um, it really is very essential that an app is being built from the very start um, in, in a sense that it, you, know, you can add anything from gamific gamification, communities, and other things um, to it. And you know, keep the user really engaged, which, which is one of the things that we were talking with Catherine today about. Is that you know uh, maybe you can you want to take over there, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, that is uh, but it's so important that it's so important um, yeah for, for for wearables to actually be user friendly and attractive and beautiful. Um, so yeah, if you don't have that, then uh, in the end you know uh, there's not that much value to the user sometimes. Yeah, maybe we should take a step back and you know tell everybody about your product and what you're trying to achieve briefly, and then what sort of data and other things you're connecting to? Oh, sure. So uh, Apollo is a, uh, and I'm Catherine, I'm the CEO of Apollo, and um, Apollo actually started as a research project. So before this ever became a product, it actually started, and if anybody saw um, Dr. David Raymond uh, talk a little bit earlier, it actually started as a research project at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, so what we were looking to do was figure out, okay, there's lots of data, there's lots of ways that we can understand what happens with changes in the body, um, but how do we empower people to actually take control of their health? Because um, if you just provide, we actually did research on this, if you just tell someone that they're stressed out or that their sleep is bad and then there isn't a solution on how to remedy that, uh, you actually can just make people more anxious. Uh, and they actually don't improve their lives and then they stop using the wearable or stop using the data because it's frustrating for them. Um, it's like being a kid in school and you keep getting a C- minus on the test and you can't figure out how to get better at it. Um, and so for us, we were looking at ways to help intervene with the human body to actually improve people's resilience to stress. Essentially, um, when you get stressed out all the time from whatever that may be, from lack of sleep or uh, just your chronic stress at work or your family life, whatever it may be, you end up getting run down over time. Um, and this has wide sweeping effects for your mental and your physical health. Um, and we can see that in biometrics, right? We can see that in your heart rate, your blood pressure, your heart rate variability. But then how do you help someone in the moment that they're stressed out actually improve those biometrics? And we discovered that vibration in, cert in a certain layered form kind of almost feels like ocean waves actually mimics what the body does when you deep breathe. And so we ended up developing, um, after doing clinical trials at the University of Pittsburgh, which demonstrated that we could actually change stress biometrics, so we could improve heart rate variability, we could take down heart rate under stress, we could improve blood pressure under stress. We tried to figure out where would someone wear this, right? How could we most easily disseminate, should this be in a bed? Should this be in a shirt? Should this, I mean, on every single different kind of form factor you could think of, and we came up with a wearable because that's what users told us. They said, I need something I can use when I need to fall asleep, but also when I need to fall asleep in my bed or on a plane. 
or when I'm in, uh, you know, when I'm traveling in a weird hotel room, or when I, uh, you know, I'm in a meeting and I need to focus, or my boss is going to notice that I'm, you know, falling asleep, or I can't stand sitting in front of the spreadsheet. I need something to help me, right? And so it became a wearable, um, and all of these things were around user experience. But the app was something so critical to what we do, not only to deliver, right, to deliver these frequencies, which you can pick from programs that are designed to help you focus or to help you wake up or programs that you would set to help you fall asleep, but also um, for the intake of data, right? So um, the next phase of Apollo is integrating into these data systems to be able to show the users in real time that they actually, that your heart rate actually is going down. Your heart rate variability actually is going up. And so for us, um, from the very beginning, creating an app experience that is beautiful and really easy to use, um, and a device that is beautiful and also very easy to use and comfortable was something from the outset that we, we very much considered. Everything was customer inquiry and testing and iteration over the whole period of the development of the product. Yeah, so it's interesting. I mean, you started out by saying it's really something that you put on when you need it. And so, so, so in a sense, you can't be the one measuring to see when my heart rate variability is flatlined and, uh, and I, need, uh, I need to calm down, for example. Or Right, but the app can integrate in with other wearables that you might be wearing. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about how, how that works. Right, so um, in the future, um, let, let's say, or we'll work. <laughs> right, we integrate with <laughs> Apple HealthKit or other wearables that are being developed all over the place. If you can see that someone's trending down and we know what their baseline is, you can tell them, hey, you should use your Apollo. You are not doing great today, right? And it's an actual solution to the problem. Like, hey, we noticed that your heart rate is really high. Okay, well, what's the person going to do about that? Right. And they have a solution to the problem now. And so they're, you know, and one of the things when you're talking about silos, and you see that in healthcare all the time with different EMRs, different data systems, none of them are talking to each other. And that happens on the consumer side with wearables too, right? And then there are certain opportunities where like HealthKit is one platform where it all exists in one place, but not every wearable is sending all of their data to that place. It's okay. How do you bring the data together, but then how do you make it meaningful and actionable for the user? Right now, how do they contextualize all this data that we're giving to them, and then what do they do about it? And so, Apollo, what we're working on is creating an intervention, but also creating a context for all of that data, such that it's useful. Yeah, and so just to be clear, so that is that sort of futures. You're working on it now. But, yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> okay, are are there specific um, platforms that you're looking at? I know earlier we talked about Aura Ring. I, I don't know. That's something that... Yeah, I mean, the first or... one are ones where it's easy to access the platform, and then we are in talks with multiple other wearables um, about direct integration with their products. I would think that'd be something they'd be pretty receptive to. Arguably, that gives them the answer to, uh, hey, you're stressed, here's something you can do about it. Right, and then also for the user experience, they are able to see, okay, I've been tracking my data, but now I'm using something that actually makes me better. Right, and so right. that's good for both sides because you have a purpose to your, the data that you've been collecting um, and a way to actually track and see that your health is improving over time, which ultimately is the goal, yeah. right? We started tracking with steps to try to encourage people to be fitter. Now we're tracking things like sleep so we can understand even deeper biometrics like heart rate variability. But ultimately the goal for all of these wearables and this whole ecosystem is to enable people to have more autonomy and control over their health. Right. I think that's that's something um, that is very important, you know, to keep under consideration from the very start. And I think that's one of the things that um, we have enjoyed so much in working with Apollo that there has been, you know, a clear vision of, you know, where does this start and where might this go at some point. And that is something because I mean, really, if you think about it, you know, when you when you're building a product, you have, you know, the firmware, you have the hardware, you have the software. There are so many different teams that work at different velocities and that have to integrate at some point. And I think that is, I mean, anyone who has been working in the space knows how challenging that is. And I mean, if you go, you know, down to the expo area and you go into, you know, the aisles of health, sleep, and wellness, wearables, it, you almost always see, you know, the device along with the app. And one of the other things that I think is, 
is very fundamental here is that we're always, you know, gearing this towards, you know, the health aspect of, you know, Apollo. And, you know, this is really where the origin also comes from, you know, as far as the research and everything. And so this, again, from a technical point of view, um, brings a lot of challenges to the table. For example, HIPAA compliance. I mean, if, you know, at some point you would want to integrate, you know, something uh, as Apollo with some kind of medical data. For example, I mean, when you're, you know, when you're an app development company, that means that the developers have to be um, trained in that regard. Um, you have to have very specific documentation, the same as with FDA approval, for example. Um, but then there's also the matter of ac accessibility. Um, you had mentioned, you know, that you had been envisioning from the beginning, you know, when and what kind of moment um, people would be using Apollo. But then also when, you know, you, for example, you're thinking about, um, you know, using Apollo for different trials and everything, um, always when you have these kind of subgroups and within kind of, you know, a health context, you have to look at people, you know, that have any kind of disabilities, you know, uh, that, you know, might also be relevant when you're, you know, looking at something as simple as it seems, you know, as the, the user interface. Yeah, so as, as you start to um, pull together data from disparate silos and, uh, and then, you know, turn that into actionable insight, you know, here on, on this platform, for example, what sort of uh, barriers, I mean, there are the obvious barriers, but how are you overcoming those, those barriers to, um, you know, to bring in data from, from the uh, Aura Ring to be able to feed the uh, Apollo device to say it's time to calm down? What are some of those challenges and how are you? I mean, I think the main challenge, um, so the main challenge is quality of the data, right, uh, from the data sources. I mean, obviously there's the technical stuff, right, like you have to connect in with Apple Health Kit or you have to connect yeah. directly through an SDK. But uh, the, I think, meaningful part that's more complicated um, and what we're really specializing in is understanding what data matters when grouped together and how do you create profiles of that data, and then how do you understand con context-wise why that data is changing around, so that you don't accidentally aggravate your user, right? Like, a lot of notifications are actually very annoying, right? And so you want to make sure that when you're providing guidance around people's health, that one, it's accurate, as accurate as it can be, but also that it's meaningful, so you don't send them false alarms that their heart rate's super high, like, yes, of course it is. I'm exercising. Right. right? Like, <laughs> and so, you know, oh, you know, you want to make sure that you're not, um, you're providing context and that you're not creating anxiety or neuroses over the data, which is something I often see. Yeah. Is that people are like, what, my, what is my HRV supposed to be? And it's like, well, right. just try to trend it upwards. Get some sleep. It's that's, okay. And I think that's something in general when you think about wearables and really the, the objectives that, you know, people have when it comes to wearables is, you know, you want it to be seamless. You want it to be easy to wear. You want it to be able to easily integrate into your life. And the same thing, you know, happens again with the app that you also want it to be intuitive. You want to know from the very start how everything works. You want the onboarding to be very intuitive. You want any kind of analytics that you might, you know, be able to visualize to actually easily giving you, you know, uh, next steps as far as, you know, okay, so what does this mean for me? What, what, what kind of, you know, insights can I, can I get out of that? And I think that, you know, just looking at this as kind of a parallel, um, this intuitiveness and this, you know, really um, good fit in a way is also something that when you have any kind of collaboration um, is very important that, you know, I mean, we, we sometimes try to see ourselves, you know, as if we were a wearable, you know, when we integrate with um, companies such as Apollo, you know, that, that, that kind of fit is really what, what, what makes this kind of partnership work. Are, are you seeing some sort of, I mean, we all have a pretty good idea of what wearables can do, can tell us, can't tell us or do at, at this point. Uh, are you, can you look out a few years based on what you're starting to see in development and what we might hope to see or folks might start wanting to help? Um, for me in general, I mean, there's always, I think we're always looking towards um, improvements as far as, um, you know, the technology aspect of it. Um, and I mentioned in the beginning some, you know, trivial, trivial things such as battery power. But, you know, really those things, you know, can be a pain. And, um, and you know, when we see the development in general, you know, it's been really going always, you know, towards um, improving the product and the overall user experience. 
Um, then as far as, as, you know, just user interface design and just, you know, really continuing to optimize that, I think that is also something, you know, that will continue to improve. But really, um, one of the milestones, I believe, will be, you know, kind of what happens with all of that data. And I mean, it's really interesting what has been happening, you know, with Apple, with Apple Health Kit and uh, with Google Fit, you know, as far as um, accumulating kind of the data and making it also easier for, um, for app developers to um, access that data and, um, you know, just, um, yeah, overall creating something that can be meaningful in the end. And I mean, if you also look at it from, you know, more philosophical point of view, wearables are, you know, so that most of the time supposed to, you know, make your life better at some point. I mean, you're looking always towards improvement, especially when it comes to health. And, you know, I think Apollo is a great example um, of that. You're always looking towards really making lives better to, you know, give uh, additional value to people and, um, and yeah. That we're all on here. Okay, I realized I, I didn't ask to see if anybody had any questions, but uh, if anybody wants to, to ask something, uh, say hi, or I don't know, are there microphones? Or... They're over ah, there. Okay, good. Okay, well, um, there's, a, there's one other thing I, I think yeah. that when we are looking at you know data and mechanism, one of the things that I think trend-wise that's really happening is we went from tracking steps and fitness to more meaningful data collection around bigger health concepts, right? Like sleep and stress and um, heart, you know, like the cardiac indicators and all these things. And I think. What's happening now uh, with wearables is I think there's going to be a new class of wearables, one that actually do things, right, that actually affect the body, that you're seeing a trend. Doppel was up here, we're up here. Um, if you go down, there's other kinds of wearables, right, for increased memory. Um, so I think mental health and over holistic lifestyle is going to be a thing beyond fitness. Uh, and I think the other thing that people are starting to look at is what does this, how does this integrate into my life more completely? And so I think, you know, product is one thing, and speaking to app content, right? Like, how do you keep this user engaged with you as part of their ecosystem to improve their health, yeah. right? And so how do we better integrate wearables into the broader ecosystem so that we're not that gadget that someone has on, but instead is this meaningful tool that they use to improve their lives over time? Right, and then part of the, part of that is figuring out when the person is would be most receptive to hearing about the content, or I mean, even something as simple as you're stressed. I mean, you send that at the wrong time, and like, I know, I know. You know? <laughs> thanks, right? thanks for yeah, that. yeah, thanks. For that. <clears throat> yeah, and AI is a huge component of that. And as yeah. we talk about data and data silos, like as data becomes in a greater platform, and we and we create content, it's actually learning to personalize that content and curate those experiences for those individual people. Yeah. You, you, you stated right at the beginning about a comparable concept where you, we all know we've got numerous data capture points for wearables, which depends on what we're doing and where we are and the type of environment we're in. But you picked on the point of parables. Can I just ask you to, what's your vision of bringing real connectivity to wearables in the next year or so? Can, can I ask? Might be, because that's your idea. How do you see it mapping out? Sure. I think I think if you look at you know wherever you're going to strap or insert something, there are different uh, you know there are different strengths and weaknesses. I mean, this is a great place for a display and, and about the most hostile place you can find to be taking metrics, biometrics. Mm -hmm. So this is better. It's battery life is an issue. This is better still. Um, and so I think there's an opportunity to, um, to create a team. And, and that's, you know, and it doesn't, it can be partners. It doesn't have to be a Samsung or an Apple making three devices that all work together. I mean, there's, there's partnership opportunities too, but I, I think folks need to be open to that because, you know, this is going to have to be the value decade. It's going to have to start now, I think. The ecosystem is better doing it together. I think one of the interesting points, and um, also that that Catherine was was mentioning, is you know the importance of content and how 
that kind of integrates in, in this entire ecosystem that we're kind of talking about. So just to give you an example, um, one, um, one company, one, one startup with, um, they have dedicated themselves to early breast cancer detection. And one of the things that they found was that, you know, especially in the US, it's very hard for women, you know, to take that step um, towards, you know, getting, getting their tests on and everything. So in this case, for example, they developed a wearable, which is, you know, a patch that you can place on your breast and that then, you know, via computer vision um, can give you kind of a heat map that can give you at least, you know, kind of an idea on, you know, if you have a higher risk factor or so. But they, uh, knowing that this entire topic is very hard for women, um, kind of the first approach that they're having is, um, okay, let's build an app that's, you know, targeting those women, but giving them content, giving them extra value, you know, for it, it's kind of surrounding... Um, their, uh, their, their overall health and also their um, anything from menstruation cycle to pregnancy, etc. And so they're kind of organically integrating then that into you know awareness around breast cancer that then you know connects to their wearable. So I think um, just overall understanding um, you know what what kind of people you can reach with your product and how you can improve their lives and how sometimes not the most direct way but you know kind of a, a more um, innovative um, way is actually the path of success in that sense. That makes sense. I know, was there another question? If not, yes, no? Okay. If not, I, I just want to ask, what can't you believe I didn't ask? <laughs> I stumped these both of you. <laughs> what can I not believe you didn't ask? <coughs> um, well, and then answer it. <laughs> okay. Not just leave you so halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess um, one of the things that I notice, um, particularly when we're in these tech technology-centric uh, settings, uh, is um, how do you understand who your user is and why they want to use your product and yeah. how that product benefits them. Um, and that's one thing that I see. Um, you know, you were talking about there's some uh, startups that start and they've got a really beautiful hardware, but they kind of forget about the app. I think that that's also endemic with development across the board. Um, you come up with this really cool technological solution, um, but then you find out that um, nobody actually cares about your solution, or uh, that the way that your solution works is actually entirely different than you thought it would be. Right? Yeah. Totally different population, totally different use case than you ever considered in the beginning. Um, and so I think, uh, in terms of the ecology and the development, I think having an open mind. Um, about how these things kind of develop and really talking to people. Um, lots of people from the very beginning is, is so crucial to development from an app perspective and our work perspective to make sure that we're creating meaningful products for people to use. Okay, perfect. Thank you all for, uh, for your attention and your time. We really appreciate it.